done with it can amount to what God wants you to be, except you have a strong life of prayer, a strong life of devotion, where the Father can unveil himself to you. And God wants to know that there are things he wants to reveal, and those things will only be known if you are intimate, you are attentive, pay attention close to his heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're starting a new teaching series today. Healing and health. Are you ready to receive God's word? Alright. Turn with me to Isaiah 33. Isaiah chapter 33. 33. <clears throat> Read one of the promises the Lord gave to Israel. Isaiah 33. We'll begin reading from verse 20. One of the promises of God to the nation of Israel as captured by the prophet Isaiah. As we begin the beautiful series, Healing and Health. I uh, can't tell how long it will last for. I believe all through this month we'll be teaching on that. Hallelujah. Is it ready? Is it working? Sorry. Okay. I think it's working. All right, it's working. It's working. So I say it's working. Good. Gives me some more freedom. All right. So let's celebrate our online audience this morning. Let's plan together for them. One more time. Celebrate you. Thank you for joining us this glorious morning and on the first Sunday of the new month of June, which is a packed month for us as a ministry. All right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Give you all the praise. Thank you for another special moment to open a new chapter in the layers of things you have for us for this year thank you for blessing us in the last two teaching series especially thank you because this morning again as we proceed further we will receive light and understanding we'll receive instructions and our bodies will receive the impact of the same and we know that at the end of this set of teachings we'll be able to say that you've done exceedingly abundantly far above all we have asked or imagined according to your power that is at work in us now in Jesus name we have prayed amen I read from verse 20 and I'll ask you to read somewhere along the line so get ready Isaiah 33 verse 20 look upon Sion the city of our appointed feasts your eyes will see Jerusalem a quiet home a tabernacle that will not be taken down not one of its stakes will ever be removed nor will any of its cords be broken it's speaking prophetically about the nation that we are now and he calls it Sion the place where we are all gathered as the saints of God verse 21 but there the majestic Lord will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams in which no galley with oars will sail no majestic ships pass by. Let's read verse 22 together. Verse 22. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our Lord giver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. I read verse 23 now. Your tackle is loosed. They could not straighten their mast. They could not spread the sail. Then the prey of a great plunder is divided. The lame take the prey. Let's read verse 24 together. Once you ready, go. And then the inhabitants will not say, I am sick. The people who dwell in it will be forgiven their iniquity hallelujah he's talking about people that will live in this Sion this Sion is the Sion of God which is the household of saints in Exodus in uh, Ephesians 20 2 verse 20 Paul calls it the household of God he said you are no longer strangers or foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. In Hebrews 12, 22, it says, But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. 
the heavenly Jerusalem. So the Zion is talking about here was a promise. Not the Zion that David built some months ago in our Christmas fest, the king of the north. I explained a little more about Mount Zion. And David represented Zion, the Zion of God, which was a promise to come by his own place in Jerusalem where he was king, which was a strong city, like a fortress, a place where it was not easy to break place that was not easy to break so he represented what god will do by that physical place so mount sion for us now is the place where the new creation is it is the house of new creation so in hebrews chapter 22 he says you have come to mount sion so that's where we are now so he's rolling out prophecies he's speaking of the promises the things that will happen in that place and having listed many things in verse 24 he says and the inhabitant will not say i am sick the people who dwell in it will be forgiven their iniquity it says the inhabitants will not say i am sick so he's speaking prophetically about the new creation the new life the life of god that will be devoid of sickness says they will not say i am sick when he says they will not say i am sick here he is primarily referring to a spiritual reality first he is not really talking about physical wholeness which will surely emanate from that when he says the inhabitants will not say i am sick he is referring to the fact that they will be in health so when he says they will not say i am sick that means they will not be sick that means they will be in health healing and health are not the same thing healing can lead to health but healing is a state where you need a restoration health is a state of perfect soundness where you are not in need of healing so a healthy person is one that is not sick a healthy person is one that is not in need of healing he doesn't need healing you can get healing to become healthy but you can stay healthy so when he says the inhabitants will not say i am sick he's referring to the spiritual condition of man that is man will be in health and at the same time the spiritual condition of man will translate to his physical state so while the primary root of this word here is in salvation and wholeness of the spirit we must also take and lay claim of this promise for our physical bodies because the spiritual and the physical are interwoven the spiritual governs the physical so if he says i will not be sick or i will not say i am sick which is the confession of the new creation therefore i can say the same in my body we can lay the same claim and say the inhabitants of mount zion will not say i am sick that means sickness will not be their confession sickness will not be their confession glory to god so it says they will not say i am sick the word sick here is the Hebrew word chala, C H A L A H, C H A L A H. Kala, correctly pronounced that way. It means to to be weak, to be weak, or to be or become sick. 
it also means to be grieved like to be sorry to feel weak so kala will be the state of a man and when he's teaching he's teaching primarily concerning the glories of the new creation how that the man that was weak in spirit will now gain health the man that was weak in spirit will now be strong in matthew 5 verse 2 let's see matthew 5 we're going to open so many scriptures in this study <clears throat> so get ready for it matthew 5 verse 2 from verse 1 Matthew 5 verse 1 and seeing the multitudes he went up on the mountain and when he was seated his disciples came to him then he opened his mouth that's Jesus and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are the poor the poor in spirit the big word tokos p-t-o-c-h-o-s p-t-o-c-h-o-s tokos it means to be depraved to lack to not have something so he says blessed are the poor in spirit that means the poor in spirit will lack something there will be a depravity in that spirit there will be something missing in that spirit that will make that spirit weak that will make that spirit sick so in luke 4 luke 4 luke chapter 4 jesus opening the book of the prophet isaiah and quoting from there verse 17 and he was handed the book of the prophet isaiah luke 4 verse 17 wait for you a little bit Luke 4 17 are you there are you there if you're there say yes sir, yes, sir. all right good you have to open your Bibles quickly and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor hallelujah and this is the line of our song anointed jesus it comes out this weekend hallelujah while you are still drinking in pentecost comes out this weekend glory to god so jesus is the guy is mandate here it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to say that liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year the acceptable year of the lord verse 20 then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him let's read return one together so the one one to ready go and he began to say to them today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing it says today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing the scripture that he had been sent by god to preach the gospel to the poor the poor again will refer to those that are depraved those lacking in something therefore not being strong not being strong being weak so they lacked something i explained this to you some weeks ago also when he says be the poor there he's not referring to material wealth he's referring to some void in the spiritual realm some void in the spirit of the man that will now be supplied So this void came because of the first man's rejection of the life that God was offering. God offered life 
in the garden of Eden so that that life will be the perfection and wholeness of the man the man will be made whole when he receives the life of God these are the things we have explained in our teaching spiritual and body like I said we are continuing directly is this is a series this entire year so there's no way you can survive if you're going to that first teaching so there is a supply a supply that perfects so we said that God's eternal plan is that the spirit of man will become the spirit of God remember that remember that so there will be a spiritual journey for the man the man will begin as a created being to receive the life of God and become perfected so he will be made whole in his spirit when he receives the token the deposit of God the life of God in him when he was created he was not created perfect he was to be perfected he was not created with sin but he was created to be perfected so when the man turned his back on the tree of life having turned his back on the tree of life he became lacking he became short he lost something something was missing and there goes what we call sin so sin came into the picture sin means to miss the mark that means there is a mark set but you wear off it sin means to go off the standard to fall below the standard to fall besides the standard we have a study a robust study on sin the doctrine of sin and the forgiveness of sin you may want to get the book or the teaching to help your understanding further but we'll expand a bit on some of those things again in this study so it means to go off the mark so god had set perfection for the man but because the man rejected the tree of life which would be a symbol of the spirit of god that will perfect man the man was shot in spirit he was short that means he was lacking in something he was not perfect he needed to be perfected so until the man rejected until he rejected the gift of life he was not sick but having rejected the tree of life he became sick so in genesis 3 let us see genesis 3 there goes now a proclamation from God Genesis 3 a proclamation verse 22 Genesis 3 verse 22 are you there Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become, become like one to know good and evil. I told you of us is not there because it confuses the context. Has become like one to know good and evil. And now lest he pull out his hand and also and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed children at the east of the garden of eden and the flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life so having been isolated separated from the tree of life the man became lacking the man became depraved the man had a void the man was sick his sickness was first spiritual he was weak because the strength of that spirit will be God. The talking of God in the man will be what will make the man strong. So we saw the word kalah to mean to be weak. 
to be weary to be diseased to be grieved that means to lack something crucial but another in the strongest definition it says to be worn w-o-r-n like worn out to be worn out something that is very weak you obviously sometimes wanna if you just pull it apart it goes apart so the man had sickness he was sick he was weak he lacked something he lacked the strength of god because god will be the strength of the man so until the man rejected and went the other way he was still within the promise of god for health for life so now he is sick the first man became sick not physically but spiritually that means he was weak he lacked something he lacked the spirit of god are you following this morning so his sickness will need curing to be sick we have seen it means to be poor in spirit something was missing in spirit so his sickness will require curing in god's plan if he didn't reject the tree of life if he received the tree of life he would have been made whole he would have been healthy he would have been perfect in spirit he would never have been sick therefore needing healing but he rejected the tree of life therefore he was sick and will need healing but in god's eternal plan god's original plan his plan was for wholeness in the spirit wholeness in the spirit the man will be whole in the spirit so god's plan was for health spiritual health the man sound robust perfect lacking nothing in his health so god's plan was for health but the moment the man deviated into sin rejected god by disobedience he was now shot he was lacking in the spirit having been lacking in the spirit he now became sick therefore because of his sickness he will now need healing glory to god so the same picture is what we have in the natural body the spirit of man if healthy will keep the body healthy because the spirit of a man is what sustains the body of the man in james chapter 2 let's see james chapter 2 james chapter 2 james chapter 2 in verse 26 straight away the apostle says for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead for the body as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead james 2 verse 26 that's a very powerful scripture on faith but i won't teach that now but look at the focus for as the body without the spirit is dead so what is carrying the body the spirit is the same way you're saying what is carrying faith works so i always tell you that if there's faith you act if you don't act there's no faith so body is likened to faith spirit is likened to works can you see that there can you see that there so faith is spineless without works faith is as good as non-existent without works so if there is truly faith there will be actions corresponding and once there is no action there is no life in faith so 
the body without the spirit is dead so it is the spirit we explained it already in our teaching spirit soul and body it is the spirit that carries the body the moment the spirit is out of the picture the body shuts down completely the moment the spirit has left the body of a man his body completely shuts down it is the same way if you trickle it down a little bit if the body or if the spirit is weak what will also happen to the body the body will be weak if the spirit is out of the body and the body completely becomes inactive therefore uh that's like zero right so if the spirit is completely active the body can be completely active that's like a hundred percent right so if we decrease the hundred percent we bring it down and the spirit becomes weak and weak and weak and weak and weak maybe to 30 percent then the body will also follow suit in experience so the body is carried by the spirit in proverbs 18 proverbs 18 we see the words of the wise man proverbs 18 verse 14 i want us to read that together proverbs 18 verse 14 proverbs 18 verse 14 have you found it have you found it let's be together once you ready go the spirit of a man sustain him sickness but who can bear a broken spirit read again the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness but who can bear a broken spirit so the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness in the previous chapter chapter 17 look at what it says in verse 22 proverbs 17 verse 22 proverbs 17 verse 22 let's read that also together want to ready go a merry heart does good like medicine but the broken spirit dries the bones read again a merry heart does good like medicine but the broken spirit dries the bones a broken spirit dries the bones so if the spirit is broken then its brokenness will impact automatically on the physical body the bones are part of the physical body even though you can see them many times so a merry heart does good like medicine we're going to get to that later in the teaching series but a broken spirit dries the bones the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness a broken spirit will dry the bones so if the spirit is broken it will impact on the body if somebody is going to die he will first begin to be weak in his spirit and i told you being strong or weak in the spirit for you the new creation is being strong or weak in your mind because your spirit is not weak it is born of god but it can look like it is weak if the mind is weak so you got to take care of your mind sort things out in your mind settle it within yourself that you are healthy and you stay healthy fulfilling all god's plan for your life glory to god so a broken spirit will dry the bones so that means that seems to be like an emitting force like i told you already that the spirit is an emitting force that seems to be like there's an emitting force that powers the body because the moment man fell the narrative changed man became mortal in genesis 3 god revealed to the man what had happened to him god wasn't cursing him God was only telling him what happened because of his actions in verse 17 Genesis 3 verse 17 Genesis 3 verse 17 then to Adam he said because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you saying you shall not eat of it 
cursed is the ground for your sake in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and it, you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground that means till your spirit leaves you for out of it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return so he says dust you are to dust you shall return so he shows us that because of the man's fall because this was never in, in, in discussion before god was now explaining what had happened because he warned him if you eat of this fruit in dying you will die you will surely die that means if he didn't eat of this fruit there was no need for this conversation here so he now explains to him this is what has happened because of what you did not that god cursed him god doesn't do such so he said this is what will happen this is the consequence of your action because your spirit is sick which means weak it will not be able to power your body for so long so at some point the body will begin to feel it so he says the body without the spirit is dead that shows there is a very the body is dependent on the power of the spirit and how powerful the spirit is that's why the proverb says if the broken spirit will dry his bones if the spirit is broken if the spirit is dry the dryness will translate to the body i want you to understand what i'm teaching right now very well because if you get it it is one key secret to stay in health because while we're going to talk about healing our focus is primarily on health to see you healthy stay in health but this is an important secret to know that the body is connected to the spirit the body is nothing without the spirit the body without the spirit is dead is inactive is inoperative it doesn't mean is non-existent when something is proclaimed to be dead it means it's inoperative it's inactive it is there but it is lifeless so the body is connected to the spirit the spirit will power the body very importantly the spirit will be the strength the carrier of the body so the moment man fell the weakness in his spirit the sickness in his spirit affected the body the body could not sustain itself because the spirit that was supposed to power it was not strong enough didn't have what it takes hallelujah so jesus comes into the picture to fix this sickness so he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel the good news to the poor the good news to the poor to heal the brokenhearted when he says the brokenhearted he is not referring to somebody whose heart is broken because of uh, some loss of money or some relationship heartbreak or your friend deserted you and your heart is broken. That's not what he's referring to. I thought you already, you know, in the series Forgiveness of Sins, being broken hearted does not mean that somebody, you know, something emotional to heal the broken hearted is a state go back there look for look for look for again verse 18 the spirit of the lord have you found it have you found it Shall 
so the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted sent me to heal the brokenhearted so we've already seen to preach the gospel to the poor to announce the good news what's the good news there is life there is restoration there is salvation and it says to heal the brokenhearted the word heal is the word eomai i a o m a i eomai i a o m a i eomai it means to cure to cure that means something is or someone is sick and then you cure you fix Hallelujah. So, Iomai means to cure. To make whole. To free from errors. You should take those things down. Whenever we are speaking, you should be writing. Look at your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you writing? Get your response. Your neighbor, are you writing? Confirm, 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 confirm. If I, tell your tell neighbor, neighbor, show me your notes. So far today check if you have anybody else have a note let me know raise your hand if your neighbor doesn't have a note charles the neighbor doesn't have a note you should have a note is it working what's wrong with your sound today? your neighbor should have a note you didn't come to church to spectate you came to learn so everything we are right, we are we are teaching, including the the Greek words, the Hebrew words, they are important for your learning because these kind of things are the things that make you fall into deception. So Iomai, I said, means to cure, means to heal, to make whole. So it says to heal the brokenhearted. To heal the brokenhearted. So I told you the healing of the brokenhearted there does not refer to someone whose heart is broken physically, someone who's emotionally down, and then Jesus wants to heal him of that. No, you can get some therapist to do that for you. Or you can confess the word long enough and you will receive that health. Or that healing. So, broken hearted, two words broken and hearted. Broken is the one, Sun Tribo. S U N. What's that? Why are people laughing? Sun, Sun Tribo. Tribo, actually. It's better to call it Tribo, not Tribo. S U N T R I B O. You should write all those words down. Sun Tribo refers to, to breaking pieces, to be crushed. To tread down, to shatter, like a shatter, <laughs> to break in pieces, to tread down, to tread down, like to trample something underfoot, like to break, to crush, to shatter, to crush something. That's what Sunday means. To crush. So you see what he's saying here to heal the crushed the crushed in spirit the crushed in spirit will mean the one whose spirit is down he's still referring to the same thing he is just using different interplay of words it is still a depraved spirit that he is trying to heal he is trying to fix he is trying to make whole. Therefore, it says to heal the brokenhearted will be to lift, to cure the crushed in spirit. So, Sun Tribo refers to to be crushed, 
So the broken-hearted one is one who has a spiritual condition of one that is crushed. That is a destitute. Not a crush, but the one that is crushed. There is a crush and there is one crushed. It's from, it's from the word tribo. Like a worn-out path. A broken path that you are now trying to fix. Tribo is like a, like a beaten path. So when you create a path, something will be broken off. If you create a new path, you have to break off something to create that path. So something broken, something trampled on that foot. It shows a position again that man needs to be lifted from. The same way it says poor in spirit, weak in spirit. So healing is needed first for the spirit of the man. So salvation now comes in, or salvation, according to a dear brother. In Matthew 8, Matthew 8, Matthew 8, verse 25, has this mic thing been fixed? Okay, so I can know what to do. Stop strapping this thing on my ears. Matthew 8, from verse 23, actually. Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing it says lord save us we are perishing they want the receiver and the box what's the receiver it's one receiver and the box you want everything hey come and take it now sorry technology problems uh, all right so it says lord save us we are perishing the word save there is the word sozo in the Greek. Some of you might be wondering. I thought we were teaching on healing. Why so much Greek scriptures? There's no other way to help your understanding than to break it down like this for you. So it says, Lord, save us. Sozo in the Greek, S O Z O, means to save, literally, to keep safe and sound. To keep safe and sound. It means to rescue from danger. To rescue from destruction. To rescue from danger. To rescue from destruction. It also means to, to save a suffering one. Someone that is suffering from sickness. Someone suffering from a disease. Like to make well. To restore to health. So this is save us. You see, a protection from danger. So, and that's what salvation is. Salvation is a rescue. A rescue, a restoration, and then a preservation. When there was salvation, God doesn't just save us from sin. Doesn't just save us from destruction. He preserves us so we will not be destroyed. He preserves us from destruction. He saves us and keeps us. So when you understand the word sozo, it's going to help you a lot more. In the next chapter, chapter 9, Matthew 9, see the word again. Matthew 9, verse 20. One. Now, this was the woman, the one that covered the issue of blood from verse 20. And suddenly, a woman who had the flow of blood for 12 years, Matthew 9, verse 20, came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Let's read verse 21 together. Verse 21. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Verse 22, together. He said, 
Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that heart. If you see the KJV, it calls it whole. Made whole from that heart. The word whole, again, is the word sozo. S-O-Z-O. -O. Sozo. Used for physical healing. So, there is a wholeness that comes to keep safe and sound, to rescue from a harm, to deliver, rescue from danger and destruction, to save a, a diseased one. To deliver, not just to deliver, the word sozo has protection in it. You are not just delivered, you are kept safe. So, he rescues. <clears throat> Having rescued, he now keeps. Having delivered, he now keeps. Pay close attention. I'm just laying out the foundation for you as we go on today. So when there is salvation, there is a rescue. You are rescued from something. You're rescued from like a destruction. You're rescued from an impending danger or a current danger. And having been rescued from that danger, it now comes with preservation. There is now a wholeness. There is a perfection that comes with it. A soundness to be total, to be healthy, to be perfect and complete. And that's what God did to us in salvation. When he saved us, rescued us from sin and its consequences, he now preserves us. He now keeps us by his spirit within us. In Acts 2, Acts 2, Acts chapter 2. This was the, the preaching of Peter, the first preaching. He is now quoting from the prophet Joel. Verse 19. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, the word sozo there shall be saved. So you see there, he's talking about salvation, not from sickness. But this one is a rescue. He, he refers to certain events, certain things that will happen. There will be signs, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will turn to darkness, the moon into blood. He's talking about tumult. Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. He's talking about what will happen in the times to come. But he says those who call on the name of the Lord will be rescued. They will be saved. They will enjoy deliverance. They will be saved. Now, not from sickness this time around, but a rescue from harm. A wholeness. So you see that the word sozo saved was used for salvation. You see now, in he continues in this Acts 2. He continues to teach and teach and teach. He goes on into verse 34. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They wanted to be rescued from this. Verse 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the remission of sins. 
for the remission. Remission there is the word aphasis. A P H E S I S. Aphasis refers to many things. It says for the remission of sins. Aphasis refers to primarily a release from bondage or punishment or imprisonment. To release from bondage, to release from Im imprisonment. That means someone is now free. Again, it refers to a rescue. You are now saved from something. It also means to forgive, literally, to deliver. To forgive, to pardon. Now, God's forgiveness to us is beyond the pardon. God's forgiveness to us is a release from the bondage and a hold, the hold of sin. That's why when you forgive people, you can't say you are forgiving someone and you are still talking about their sins. You keep talking about what they've done. You keep referring to that's how the other day. 2014. That's how the other day. When we were still five and six years old. You keep talking about that. You have not released them from that sin. So forgiveness with God is not that he says, don't worry, I pardon you. Don't do it again. No. There is a release. And that is why God's forgiveness is beyond just the actions you partake in. God's forgiveness is an act that he did once. He released you from the bondage of sin. That is what forgiveness is. Like I told you, we have a full teaching on it. You can get that teaching to have a full understanding of what I'm saying. And a book. You can get the book if you don't like teachings. I don't know how you not like teachings. So, there is a release. A deliverance which again brings into the picture a rescue. You are rescued from sin. The hold of sin is broken. Not the petty actions of sin and, of lying and cheating and stealing and all of that. But sin as an entire captor. Sin as a captor seen as a taskmaster what jesus did when he died on the cross was to deliver us from the hold of sin was to release us from the bondage of sin and that release from the bondage of sin is what is called forgiveness and that is why forgiveness for the believer happens to you once when you get saved you are forgiven because that is what is offered he says when you are baptized so that you can receive the remission of sins it is not what you'll be receiving every day that's why you don't wake up every morning and the first thing you want to say in your prayer is lord please forgive me for the sins of yesterday for the sins of today you wake up every morning the first time you want to pray the first thing you do now let's ask forgiveness of sins let's receive forgiveness of sins now, what if you didn't wake up that morning? What's going to happen? So you died in your last sin. It doesn't work that way with God. No. He doesn't, he doesn't count sins on, you know, a sheet of paper and he's counting them by acts. In one singular action, God forgave you. And to say he forgave you is not, don't worry, I've heard you. Don't do it again. To forgive you means he released you from the hold. That means he said sin will no longer have power over you. Sin will no longer be your captor. I told you the word of faith means to release from imprisonment. So God took us out of the bondage of sin. He delivered us from the hold of sin. He broke the power of sin over us once and for all. That's why when the preaching is done, what is offered is remission of sins. What is offered is deliverance from sin. It's not something you receive every day when you wake up or when you want to pray. Just want to pray now. Let's quickly just, just let's go for the Lord and let's quickly confess our sins. What of when you don't have the chance to confess? And your life either ends or Jesus returns. 
I told several times, God will not make you reign with him based on your last act. Your last action is not what will determine what, where you will end. I always tell you. One singular act to surrender to the Lord Jesus and receive freedom from sin. I told you, when you talk about sozo, you're referring to rescue from danger and then a preservation. You are preserved. The consequences are gone. You're preserved. So, remission is deliverance to rescue. In Acts 10, see the same thing? In Acts chapter 10, Peter preaching, verse 40, Acts 10, verse 40. So, the one that is rescued is now free. It's free. It's free from sin. Verse 40, him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God. To be judge of the living and the dead. Now let's read verse 43 together. Verse 43, everybody wants to ready go. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Remission is forgiveness. It is what you receive once. You don't receive it every morning. You don't receive it every day when you pray. You are not given when you pray. You are given when you believed the gospel. Because it is one singular act. So when that happens, when I sin, you are now taken from that forgiveness, which is the spirit of God in you. The release from sin is the spirit of God in you. God gives you his spirit. His spirit breaks the hold of sin. So he says, if you walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. When we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. So the solution to sin was not to keep forgiving it every day. was to install the spirit in man. So the spirit installed in man once is the forgiveness of sins. Is the release from sins. So that spirit given to man once. The moment that spirit is given, we have received the forgiveness of sins. We have received the release from the hold of sin. So that spirit is a one-time action of God to deliver us, to rescue us from the hold of sin. So sin no longer has a power. So that forgiveness of sin, we received it once. And we received it the day we got born again. We don't receive it every morning. We don't receive it when we pray and we say, Lord, forgive us all our sins according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Or is it forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us? When we forgive, he will forgive. That's, that's not true anymore. That was a prayer before the cross. And the cross changed everything. Hallelujah. So forgiveness, wholeness that you received, you received it once. It was done once. So he didn't say you receive it every day. He says, you receive, he says, that to him, verse 43 again, see now, to him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him, we receive, in this way, we we'll keep receiving, we we'll always receive, no, he will receive the remission of sins. He will receive the deliverance from sins. He will receive the release from the bondage of sin. That's why I told you the, the Greek words are very important. Because what some people know as forgiveness is just pardon. So look, every morning when you ask God, God will not say, don't worry, I've heard you. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. And Lord say, well, Lord, I will not do it again. Then tomorrow you do it again. Say, Lord, I know I said I will not do it again, but you see, don't worry, I pardon you again. I pardon you again. And that cycle continues. So some people think that's what God is doing every day. You know, and then God has to listen to all of our sins every day and then keep telling us the same thing. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Because you have not asked, I have not forgiven. No. For the believer, the moment he's born again, he has received the forgiveness of sins. He has received the remission of sins. 
so he has forgiveness with him hallelujah say i have forgiveness of sins with me now hallelujah say so boldly say i have the forgiveness of sins i've been delivered from the hold of sin therefore shout it loud say therefore sin has no hold over me say i'm free from the power of sin forever because of the spirit of god within me hallelujah have you seen it you see? You see? so there is forgiveness there is forgiveness there is a release so the one that is released is now free from that hold so what happens when i sin i take from my forgiveness that means i look into the spirit given because the spirit is my forgiveness is my release through the spirit i'm delivered from the hold of sin so i now take from my forgiveness that is i'm now drawing strength from the spirit do you think god did not know you are still going to commit sins when you got born again he knew that is why sin doesn't change when you get born again sin is not different when you were not born again when you, it's the same thing it's just that now you have power over it now you have a hold over it. that's why you don't get born again thinking you will never be able to sin again no uh, the desires are still there the temptations are still there only that now you don't have the will and desire to sin because the spirit of god is within you there are temptations that want to lead to a desire but you remind yourself that the willingness to do good is what god has given me remember we learned on wednesday that it is god that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure so we have the spirit within us that allows us to do good so by default we are good doers so when i commit a wrong the spirit of god knows that's why he puts me in check and raises me up again makes me bounce back so when i commit a sin it makes the, the volume louder so that thing you did was wrong say oh i'm sorry i won't do it again help me i receive your help because you have been given to me to help me so whenever i do wrong i draw from my forgiveness i take from it i have it already so i take from it to strengthen me to live above the hold of sin but sin will never dominate the believer anymore the believer that allows sin to oppress him has not looked into his forgiveness is not focused on his forgiveness does not pay attention to the work that god has done within him so it's a deliverance it's a rescue a rescue you see something similar in in genesis let's see genesis we are looking at the word healing we are looking at salvation or salvation according to apostle john genesis 19 there's a story of lot lot was you know he had in his greed taken the land of sodom when abraham offered him the opportunity to pick anywhere he liked so he picked sodom but disaster struck on sodom verse 15 now the story is quite long i can't tell all that angels came to check out because a lot had reported sodom to god i taught you that in the series series that now the gospel of inclusion last year when we were explaining that Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed because of homosexuality, as many people thought, or because of some specific sins, but because of the sin of unbelief, because they did not re receive the gospel. And Jesus uses the example many times when he's talking about those that rejected the gospel, he's talking about hospitality. Those that received the preacher of the gospel, he will refer to Sodom. So Sodom wasn't different from otherwise god would have destroyed america the uk and all those countries that promote strongly and even nigeria because now they are getting stronger and stronger 
but we must keep getting stronger hallelujah with our message we must keep being loud about it that god made man male and female and said they should be together so sodom and gomorrah were not destroyed because of homosexuality that's that's poor bible understanding that, and that means god is partial that means god singled that city differently from other cities because all through i showed you last year god was judging faith was he was he in that teaching or was he under the law and doctrine of righteousness i don't know that god because law inclusion yeah so god was dealing with faith all through the old testament otherwise abraham should have been destroyed too so here the angels came they didn't accept them they were going to leave verse 15 when the morning dawned the angels urged lot to hurry saying arise take your wife because we're going to destroy sodom and your two daughters who are here lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city and while he lingered the men took hold of his hand and his wife's hand he was delaying and the hand of his two daughters the lord being merciful to him and they brought him out and set him outside the city verse 17 let's read together verse 17 so it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said escape for your life do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed the word escape there means is the is the hebrew word malat m-a-l-a-t malat means to be delivered to save to sleep away to escape malat m-a-l a t malat means to to escape literally to be delivered to deliver to escape to save to sleep away to get away it's also used for when a woman was, is delivered of a child that's why some people will make some funny birthday greetings on your belly they'll say happy womb escape what kind of creepy stuff is that happy womb escape why did you have to say that did, 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 did he or she escape you couldn't escape they had to bring you out people that didn't allow you come out there's no glory to god so he's also used to describe when a woman is delivered of a child like somebody sleeps off sleeps forth so just escape run verse 18 then lord said to them please know my lords indeed now your servant has found favor in your sight and you have increased your mercy which you have shown me by saving my life but i cannot escape to the mountains lest some evil overtake me and i die so see now verse 20, let's verse 20 together see now this city is near enough to flee to and it's a little one please let me escape there is it not a little one and my soul shall live is it not a little one he's still asking it is a little one so he runs out of that place so that he can leave he says saved you saved my life in verse in verse verse 19 again by saving my life saving my life it says you have helped me by saving my life the hebrew word chaya c-h-a-y-a which means to to have life to live to be alive to save to be alive to remain alive to sustain life that's why it says that my soul shall live my soul will be alive chaya again c-h-a-y-a-h so escape there again you see refers to a rescue deliverance in genesis 32 show you some more genesis 32 you see another word for escape there from verse 6 now this was when jacob was returning from laban's place to meet esau then verse 6 then the messengers returned to jacob saying we came to your brother esau and he's he also is coming to meet you and 400 men are with him so jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that were with him 
and the flocks and herds and camels into two companies and he said if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it then the other company which is left will escape the word peletar p-e-l-e-t-a-h peletar p-e-l-e-t-a-h peletar also means to escape and be delivered he said if he attacks one company the other company will run that means they will escape they will be free so you see the word again deliverance referring to safety being rescued from harm prevention from danger and from the consequences from the consequences hallelujah Let's see some more scriptures. I told you we're going to remain scriptures today. Mark 5. Mark 5. Mark 5. We need to explain and understand what happened to the spirit of the man first. Because we have explained that the spirit of man became sick and was in need of wholeness, of deliverance. Mark 5. Again, we see the story of the woman. That had the issue of blood let's see from verse 32 and he looked around to see her who had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well so so again your faith has made you whole go in peace and be healed of your affliction go in peace and be healed of your affliction chapter 10 Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Again, you see Jesus in healing. Use the word again, sozo. Verse 50. And throwing aside his garment, that's Bartimaeus. Put aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received this sight and followed Jesus on the road. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. The word well again, the word sozo, that refers to wholeness. Your faith has made you whole. In the KJV, you see the word whole many times. Wellness. That means to keep safe and sound. To rescue from danger. So you will see, we have seen that it is used in salvation. In these places where we have read, it is used also in physical healing. So your faith has made you well. Would mean your faith has kept you safe and sound. Your faith has delivered you. From the power of sickness. Your faith has helped you to become safe and sound. You are no longer sick. So that's what happens in healing. Physical healing too. The man is rescued from the power of sickness. He is delivered from the power of sickness. He is now free from the hold of sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the man is saved. In Luke 7. Let's see one more. Luke 7. Luke 7. From. Mm, it's a long read. But let's see the woman that anointed him. From verse 43, you can read from there. It was, it was given, you know, the woman broke the box and then alabaster box and anointed his feet and the people were grumbling. Mm, she's, an, oh, she's a sinner. Why is he allowing him to, why is he allowing her to do such? Verse 43, so he gave a parable. Someone answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet but she has washed my feet with her tears 
and wipe them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. Now, it's a cultural thing. So don't, don't take it to heart. So you gave me no kiss since I came in. You gave me no kiss. <laughs> Some of you say Jesus was an homosexual for asking Simon the Pharisee for a kiss. It was a cultural thing. There's no such thing in our own culture. Eh? If you try it, they'll slap your face. <laughs> so you gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Let's read verse 50 together, verse 50. Then he said to the woman, go in peace. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So so again. This time around, he's talking about more than just healing. Speaking in the futuristic sense about redemption, about salvation. Your faith has saved you, rescued you. Because of your faith, you have been delivered. You have been rescued. So you see, salvation comes in again. From save, we now get the word soteria. From sozo, we get the word soteria. Soteria, S-O-T-E-R-I-A. Soteria is salvation itself. And it is seen from two tangents. Like I showed you, first, salvation is seen from a prevention from harm. An escape from punishment. A prevention from harm and an escape from punishment. That's one. And then a wholeness. A prevention from harm, an escape from punishment, and then a wholeness. So the, the man that is saved, the man that is born again, is rescued from harm. He escapes punishment. Escapes keeps the consequences of sin and he doesn't just escape he is brought into a perfect state he is brought into a state of wholeness he is brought into a state of soundness he is now sound so when he's saved he is whole he is healed he is sound he is not just healed he is now sound. So the sickness of the spirit, which was sin, because sin can be likened to a, to a disease. Sin is a spiritual disease. And the believer has been cured from that disease. The spirit of God is the health of the spirit of the man. Of the man. So the man is now cured you know we trace the story we, we built it up steadily since the beginning of this today and we saw that the man became sick and then he in his sickness was depraved he lacked the spirit of god he didn't have it so when jesus comes there is already a consequence of sin in john 3 verse 16 God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish. Will not perish. So that is a part of redemption. He is delivered from the power of sin. He escapes from the punishment of sin because of man's action because of man's sinful action, he created a pathway for sin. A pathway that will lead to destruction. So anyone that does not believe is destroyed. Anyone that does not believe him experiences destruction. 
will perish. So what Jesus Christ does is that he delivers us from that consequence. When a man is not born again, he is doomed for destruction. And he doesn't stop there. Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He now brings us into a state of wholeness. A perfect state. So everlasting life is not first a longevity of life because there would not have been a need to measure life by length or to measure time linearly. So it is first a quality of life. God's life. Unending. Incorruptible. Perfect. So it is first a rescue. So Jesus now comes from that position. First, he rescues. Then he makes whole. He rescues. And then he makes whole. He perfects. He ensures that nothing can again tamper with that person. That's why the one that is born of God has entered into immortality. As Paul told them in 1 Thessalonians 4, he said, when a believer uh, dies, don't cry. He has only slept because he is going to be raised again. Whatever happened to him was temporary. He cannot become corrupted again. He is now whole. There is nothing broken about him. The broken heart, the brokenness has been lifted. He is now whole. He is now healthy. Hallelujah. And that's what has happened to you as a believer. You are now whole. Say, I'm now whole. Say, Jesus has made me well. Come on, stand on your feet wherever you are. Everybody stand on your feet. And say this confession of Jesus. By his sacrifice on the cross has delivered me from the hold of sin. From the hold of sin. He has rescued me from the power of sin. And now he has brought me into a state of perfect soundness. Say, I am whole. Say, I am well. I am sound. Hallelujah. Say three times. Say, I am whole. I am well. I am sound. Say, I am whole. I am well. I am sound. One more time. Hallelujah. So he doesn't leave us halfway. He perfects us. He perfects us. So he doesn't just heal our spirit. He brings our spirit into a state of health. That we can't be corrupted anymore. No corruption. He that is born of God. Has the seed of God in him. And God is immortal. Is incorruptible so the seed of God is in the believer say we may say the seed of God is in me therefore I cannot be corrupted hallelujah this is we have escaped Apostle Peter says it having escaped the corruption that is in this world we have escaped let me show you second Peter 1 second Peter 1 second Peter 1 Mm. verse 3 from verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of, our, of God and of our say of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust that is what has happened to you say i've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so because i am a partaker come on say with boldness say because i am a partaker of the divine nature say the divine nature is never corrupt the divine nature is not mortal therefore i am incorruptible i am immortal hallelujah he called us to immortality in case you don't know that because second Timothy one 
so he says you've escaped the corruption you've escaped the corruption so he has brought you into a state of wholeness second Timothy 1 verse 8 therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner that's Paul not me but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with the holy coin not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began let's verse 10 together verse 10 once you ready go but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel hallelujah he said he abolished death and brought life and immortality life which is immortality whosoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life life which is immortality he said he brought it to light through the gospel that means that was always his plan he only revealed his plan of life and immortality through the gospel he says we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust hallelujah hallelujah say i've escaped the corruption in the world because immortality is now my reality because i'm a partaker of the divine nature hallelujah 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 have you seen have you seen have you seen as i begin to descend preparing for landing hallelujah when they say that on the plane don't believe them they still under 20 25 minutes they say let's start preparing for landing now you think you land in the next five minutes because they've gone so high so they have to come down gradually praise god so you see that the work of salvation is that now in god's original plan i explained that to you god created the man and wanted to perfect him so that he can be in health spiritually but when the man rejected that he became sick and we saw what sickness means to be weak to be weary so jesus now heals the sickness of the spirit of man so sin was a spiritual sickness that jesus cured that jesus healed he healed so healing is not just a physical thing for the body healing is first for the spirit and that is what happened that is what salvation is the moment the man is saved is healed spiritually the sickness of sin is cured cured once for all cured at once it is cured he doesn't just cure him he makes him whole he perfects him he makes him a partaker of that nature that is incorruptible he perfects the man. So back to Isaiah 3. Maybe now that scripture will make more sense to you. Isaiah 3. Verse 24. From verse 23. Isaiah 3. From verse 23. I've been blessed so far today. Mm. your tackle is loosed they could not strengthen their mast they could not spread the sail then the prey of a great of great plunder is divided the limb take the prey and the inhabitants will not say it's talking about Sion from verse 20 the inhabitants will not say I am sick the people who dwell in it will be what forgiven their iniquity do you understand that statement now the inhabitants will not say i am sick that means they will be whole they won't be the sick recovering they will be in health 
He said, because the, the people who dwell in it will be forgiven their iniquity. The ones who dwell in it will have forgiveness, which is what we have explained. So this salvation, this wholeness, this healing is forgiveness. So when Jesus healed the spirit of man, he provided the medicine. The medicine was the spirit. He offered the spirit of God, John 7 verse 9. This he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing on him will receive. The spirit was not yet because Jesus was not yet glorified. So he provides the medicine. So when man receives the spirit of God, he is made whole. He will now say, I am not sick. He will never be able to say, I am sick. I'm talking about spiritual realities first. So the man that is born of God is not sick. His spirit is not sick. His spirit is not weak. His spirit is the spirit of God. He has been born of God. Therefore, this promise is to us today. The inhabitants will not say, I am sick. Because they are whole. Because they have been forgiven. Because they have been rescued. Because they have been delivered. Not just delivered, but have been brought into wholeness. So, a whole spirit will now carry the body. But the only sad or painful part now is that the body is already mortal. The body is already weak. The body is already corrupt. Therefore, it was easier if Adam had received the spirit of God when his body was not mortal. And then the spirit will power the body and keep it alive. Remember we saw Proverbs 18 verse 14. Remember that? The spirit of the man will sustain him. We saw Proverbs 17 verse 22. The broken spirit will dry his bones. So we saw the connection directly between the spirit and the body. How that the spirit powers the body. So if Adam had not gone that route, Adam's body would not have been corrupt. And what Adam passed to all men was this corrupt body. Like I told you, Adam didn't pass sin to you. You chose sin yourself. So, so I was born in Adam's sin. It's not my fault. It's Adam's fault. That I'm sinning. No, it's your fault. So what Adam passed, like I've taught you many times, to man is this physical body that is now that was that was born mortal, that is already susceptible to sickness. But one thing that I want you to know is that as much as possible, I'm not saying it may be perfect one hundred percent. Because we we'll still feel tiredness, weakness, or something in this physical body. As much as possible, if you recognize the part that your spirit is whole, you can sustain a healthy body. You can keep your body healthy. You can go through the ropes of activities. You can go through a wonderful, difficult time. And your body is still strong. We are take some measures, eat rest as much as you can but often sickness sickness is often is not the lot of the believer he has a strong spirit his spirit is supposed to carry his body eternal life in him is supposed to radiate through his body the spirit power is supposed to shine through his body so if i will acknowledge because many times like i always tell you it comes through acknowledgement if I will acknowledge what has happened to my spirit, I will influence my mind. I will influence my body. And it will carry me. So the testimony of the believer or the, the, his greatest testimony is not the testimony of healing. It is a testimony of divine health. That is in health. Total freedom from sickness through the power of the Holy Spirit. I say again, the greatest testimony of the believer, the greatest testimony he can give 
in this regard is not a testimony of healing. That is good, but that's a journey. Is that having been healed, he has the testimony of health, divine health, sound health, total freedom from sickness through the power of the Holy Spirit within him. In 3 John chapter 2, the Apostle John speaks of his desire and prayer for Gaius. 3 John verse 2, it has one chapter. 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So as your soul prospers, you stay in health. So here we refer to the heart, the seat of knowledge, and yes, by extension, the spirit of the man. Because we said the spirit is in the soul. So as your soul prospers, as your soul, spirit is perfected, affecting your soul, your mind says, I pray that you be in health. So you can be in health. Then we say you can be in health. Then we say you can't just live on healing. You can live in health. So every time you are needing healing, you are needing healing. You are needing healing. No, you can be in health. Every time we call for sick people, you have to come out. Every time you come out, begin to move from healing to health. Said so I pray for you. That you prosper in all things. And that you be in health. The word health there is the word hugaino. H-U-G-I-A-I-N-O. Hugaino. H-U-G-I-A-I-N-O. Hugaino means to be sound. To be sound. To be well. To be sound, H-U-G-I-A-I-N-O, means to be sound, to be, to be well, to be in good health. To be in good health, to be healthy. You carry parts of your body, you feel no pain. Move around, no pain. You feel tired, you rest, you wake up, you're fine. No stomach issues, no ulcer, no selection of of food or selection of this and that. Say, so don't eat this one. Don't take this one. Don't use this one. Don't use that one. Don't use this one. To be in health. To be sound. To be rounded. Totally free from sickness. You find the word in Titus 1. Let's see a few scriptures. Titus 1. Verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught, he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine, you guys know, wholesome doctrine, sound doctrine, doctrine that benefits all around, both to exhort and convict those who contradict. In verse 13, you see the same thing there. Verse 13, this testimony is true, therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, well, whole in the faith. In chapter 2 verse 1 Titus 2 verse 1 but as for you speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine you guys know healthy doctrine verse 2 that the older men be sober reverent temperate sound in faith in love in patience sound again you guys know in 2 Timothy 1 2 Timothy 1 see there also Second Timothy one. You are you guys know. Second Timothy one. Verse thirteen. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me. Sound words. 
It doesn't mean it's sounding. No, it means it's healthy. Healthy words. Sound doctrine, sound teaching. Like this one we are hearing this morning. Sound. Whole. Rounded. One that brings health to you. That makes you stronger. That supplies strength to you. Which have heard from me in faith and love. Which are in Christ Jesus. Chapter 4. The same book. Chapter 4. We are seeing the number of places being used. 2 Timothy 4. Verse 3. From verse 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince. Rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap for themselves teachers they will not endure sound doctrine balanced whole doctrine healthy doctrine but they will heap for themselves teachers in first timothy one first timothy one that was the previous book you see again the word sound there. We're seeing the places where the word sound was used. Second Timothy 1, verse 10. Verse 10. For fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. And if there is any other thing, it's not my wood the law was given for. If there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, contrary to wholesome doctrine. In chapter 6, 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. Verse 3. We're going to read this one together. First Timothy 6, verse 3. We are seeing the place where the word Hugh I know was used. First Timothy 6, verse 3. Have you found it? Have you found it? So let's read together as a church now. Want to ready go? If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which are caused with godliness, verse 4, is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words for which come envy strife reviling evil suspicions just leave the rest but verse 3 is our is our focus does not consent to wholesome words you guys know wholesome words used two times in the gospels let's see in luke the book of luke luke chapter 15 luke 15 this was the story of the prodigal son Luke 15, verse 25. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came, he drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come home, has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. Received him safe and sound. Oh, the guy came back even though he was probably looking tattered. He was in you know good shape. His hand wasn't broken. His eyes were not gone. He was still whole. In chapter 7. Chapter 7 again. In verse 10. Luke 7 verse 10 from verse 9. When Jesus heard these things. Luke 7 verse 9. When Jesus heard these things. He marveled at him. And turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Let's put verse 10 together. Verse 10. This was the servant of the centurion. Let's just together. One to ready go. And those were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. Found the servant well. This time around is not sozo, is the word Hugai know. That refers to wholeness, soundness, sozo doesn't just refer to you know soundness it also refers to a rescue and escape but you guys know primarily refers to perfect health just sound in good health doesn't refer to rescue that's the difference so it says when they got back they found him well who had been sick they found him well who had been sick so you see the word sick there is the word asthenes a s t astheneo rather because from Aston is A S T H E N E O A S T H E N E O got it from Hastenis A S T H E N E S A S T H E N E O is the word that was found here. Got it from another word A S T H E N E S. 
the adjective of it. Asteneo means to be weak, like we have seen. To be weak, to be feeble, to be weak, to be feeble, to be without strength. To be without strength. It means to be powerless. So it says that man was weak, but now there is a supply of strength to him. It said he was weak, was feeble, powerless. That's what it means to be weak, to be sick. And that's what happens when a man is sick. He is really weak. And sickness is not the will of God for us. Because what will God do with you being sick? What will God do with you being sick? Nothing. He doesn't benefit him. We are not preaching healing and sound health just because we want to live a life to feel good. We are living a life to fulfill God's purpose. Above all things, the reason you should crave sound health is because there is a plan of God for you. And that plan will only be accomplished if you are healthy. That plan will only be accomplished if you are in health. If you are sick, you can't do much. It's the same way if you're a broke man. But I always tell you, don't call yourself broke. The broke can't do much. They can pray, okay? We can all pray. Prayer doesn't substitute giving. You pray and you give. Like a broke man, it can't, can't help the gospel. That's why God doesn't need you, Paul. You can't do much for the gospel if you're broke. You don't have money. You can't support the gospel. The gospel needs money. It runs on money, literally. The gospel is that what's this? Don't you need money? So you have the money. By God's grace. So, but that, it's not that gospel. But he also needs money. So, if, you're, if you don't have money, you are, you are not, you are useful to God, but to a degree. Because as we give, as we come to church, our resources are part of the things that we use to push God's work forward. Everything you see today, if we are having this service, it's because it's morning that has been running since 8 a.m. It's morning, literally. That's been in action. So why would God not give you wealth? What's the use? Because you can't, you can't do much for God if you, if, you, if you don't have resources. You can't even wear good clothes. You can't even get a good phone to listen to tracks. You can't even subscribe to data or to, to the internet, rather. To follow service or to download the teachings or to upload the church materials. So God doesn't need you broke. Tell anybody, God doesn't need you broke. So God doesn't like you broke. So he likes you wealthy. So he puts wealth in our hands so that we can sponsor his gospel. Primarily our wealth is for the kingdom. Our wealth is for the cause of the kingdom. Aside other things you do, your wealth is for the gospel. It's the same way our health is. Why would God afflict somebody with sickness? Why? Say, God is trying to teach you a lesson. What kind of lesson is that? He can find other ways to teach you a lesson. Say, this sickness right now, God is just trying to humble me. He's trying to show me that he's God in my life. <laughs> so he humbles you by grounding you. You can't go for evangelism. <laughs> you can't go and preach to souls because he wants to humble you. What a bad businessman that must be. You have a shopkeeper. Then he does something wrong. Then you lock him in the house. So you're not going to go out today. So you lock him in the house. Whereas he's supposed to keep the shop to make money and bring him profit. What a waste. God doesn't do that. 
The will of God is healing and health. God doesn't just want us healed. He wants us whole. Imagine we spend all our time needing healing. Imagine we have to keep paying attention in quotes to our health. We have to keep visiting the doctors. Aside spending resources which are not in God's plan at all, we ourselves, we are spent mentally. We are spent. Emotionally, we are spent. So I can assure you as I close to this morning, I can assure you for a certain that God wants you healthy. Because it is beneficial to him too. If you were sick now, probably some people could not come to church today because they were sick. Probably some are even in church and they're just managing, they're just shaking through the AC or through the fan. They're just coping under the fan. They don't want to complain. They're not feeling well. Maybe they can't even take notes. They can't even stare at me because they can't keep their eyes open. They're so painful. Imagine that somebody's ears were deaf this morning. How's he going to hear me? So what benefit will it be to God? If you are sick, it doesn't benefit him. So we need to be healthy for his purpose. We need to be healthy for his cause. We need to be strong not just for ourselves and our family we need to be strong for his name for his glory it's only when we are on our feet that we can do much for him so when i strive to be in sound health i'm not just doing it for my own selfish interest i'm not just doing it for myself alone I'm doing it because God needs me on my feet. The church needs me on my feet. The sinners on the streets need me on my feet. I need to be healthy. I need to be a shoulder to carry the burden of others. So the subject of healing and health is beyond me. It is part of purpose for me. That I must fulfill God's plan for my life. And I will only fulfill God's plan in my life if I'm in this physical body. The moment the man dies, that's the end of God's plan for him. God has to find another person if he didn't commit his task. God has to transfer the assignment to another person because he probably died or he died young. So God doesn't need your sickness. He doesn't need your death. He needs you healthy. Hallelujah. He needs you healthy. He needs you healthy. He needs you healthy. Therefore, you stay healthy. Hallelujah. Know it for sure. Know it for sure. That God's lot for you is health. And then you must affirm it all the time. God can't want me sick. And that's one of the ways you lay claim on divine healing. The Lord, of what use am I to you on the sick bed? Look at the great Reverend Kenneth E. Again, at age 17, God cured of a, of a chronic heart disease at 17. Just imagine that man died at 17. Just imagine how much an entire, an entire, you know, not even generation now many generations he has affected still affecting his books his teachings his, his bible school and all the things that are still the man has been died has been dead over 20 years now and his works still live on just imagine he died at 17 of what use of what use are you to God on the sick bed? So you remind yourself that God wants me alive and healthy. Therefore, I take my claim of sound health. I don't just receive healing. I live in health. 
I go beyond healing. I live in health. I'm not always needing healing. I'm an inhabitant of Zion. I will not say I am sick. Because that's not my confession. So God needs you healthy. And that's why he sent Jesus. First to fix spiritual sickness. So that you can trust and power your, your life from within. And then he now heals sick bodies before the cross he was healing in matthew 8 verse 14 15 16 he said he was healing so that it will be fulfilled what the prophet isaiah said he himself bore our sicknesses bore our infirmities so jesus heals today and the moment you receive healing on a particular issue move into health don't keep needing healing on the same thing it doesn't do god any good it doesn't do you any good every time you are treating the same issue you got cured of all that some time ago then it's back again of what use you're spending money wasting money wasting money we, even you have you seen someone that is sick he's not even himself he can't there are things he can't focus on look at the word asking now it means to be weak to be feeble he can't even carry certain things Everybody is active. They are going on evangelism. Say, I can't work for long. In fact, if I walk from here to that place, I will be feeling tired inside. Do you think that is useful to God? No. God doesn't want that. He doesn't like that. So, Bible says, Jesus went about doing good. So, for this course, First John 3 verse 8, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. It was when man fell that sickness came in. His body could not carry him. And the Bible calls it the works of the devil. The Bible says Jesus delivered people that were oppressed. Acts 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Who went about doing good. Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Healing all were oppressed by the devil because god was with him so he heals all who are oppressed because he needs us healthy alive well imagine that after standing for two minutes now you're already feeling like sitting again because you can't stand that's not goes for your life and that's why he sent jesus i'm going to pray with everybody i seek here this morning wherever you are just put your hands on wherever you are wherever it is the issue is in your body with this assurance that God wants you healthy there is no way God can be responsible for sickness he can't be responsible he can't be pleased with it many times he just wants us to take our our possession lay claim to the hold of health the provision of health and you see when you receive healing on this issue this morning after now you will not need it again because you've not been healthy I worship you healing Jesus healing Jesus mm, I recognize you Ooh, your power is here today your power is here today your power Healing Jesus. Healing Jesus. If you're sick, you can just come forward. Don't worry, just come forward. I'll just speak the word over you. I will lay hands on you. But you'll lay hands on yourself. Healing Jesus. Healing Jesus. I worship you. Anyone that is in the body, come forward. Healing Jesus. Healing Jesus. I recognize you. You. Your power. feel ashamed it's part of your provision in redemption healing Jesus healing Jesus that's who he is I worship you healing Jesus healing Jesus I recognize you Somebody will write 
take your legacy and just pray this morning as you stand before me. If they are online, just put your hand, your number on your body, on your head, on your abdomen, anywhere in your body, your legs, your skin, wherever it is, your bones, your knees, wherever it is, as you put your hands on it and you hear the words of this song, of the song, the power of God will move through your body. Your power is here today. Your power, your power is here today. Oh, just pray this morning. Just pray, just pray, just pray. And as you pray, believe that healing has come to you. Your power is here today. So now you want healing from now. Because you walk in hell.